then it is better to keep it as a suffering in a five uh, in a five uh, ob obstacle means five ditches on the path like where we can fall in and get trapped so we can take it that way uh, but, but just to mention it to you uh, klesha uh, which also meant by the five types of poison which can poison our path poison our path towards uh, achieving that liberation so these are our uh, most of the most of us uh, we live a life of suffering this uh, the patanjali yoga sutra says these are the five uh, obstacles or five panchaklesha that is the root cause of our all suffering so that's why it is important to understand them then we'll go one by one and i will explain what does that mean so that was the reference that first it was it originally came from patanjali yoga sutra so next is what what they identified so just let me give you the the list of those five that uh, kleshas and what is mentioned first and foremost they mention is avidya ignorance what is meant i will explain later just plus let me say the what are the five they have uh, identified and first is avidya then uh, is, uh, then the next one is uh, uh, ashita or it is egotism is uh, like uh, how we get into that as, uh, asmita asmita or egotism that is ahankar or that is also another way of explaining it so i will go again into detail what does that mean so avidya asmita and then next is raga craving you know that uh, or uh, desire so that is uh, third one and then the fourth one is called desha and uh, or aversion or whichever we don't like you know we don't that is that is the fourth one and the last one is the fifth one is avinivesha it is uh, it is meant actually cleansing to life or in other words fear of death <clears throat> so these are the five uh, which is mentioned and um, in into that uh, um, into that panchaklesha so i just repeat one of them in sanskrit there's a uh, avidya ashmita raga desha and avinivesha <clears throat> and if you just make just in uh, in english so first is ignorance then egotism that craving then aversion then clinging to life or the fear of death all this are is mentioned as the root cause of suffering and all the suffering the root causes are created by our mind so whatever they mentioned here these five elements or the chaklesha these are our mind creations so this is not the truth so that's why it is mentioned that for suffering to the liberation we have to overcome these obstacles so that you can you can see the truth you the realize the truth and the your experiential first hand experience of the truth we liberate yourself that is that is the that is the whole purpose of this exercise so let me now go into the explaining that uh, things what does that mean one by one <clears throat> first is ignorance ignorance means avidya avidya about what you know that is ignorant about what ignorant is first our ignorance is our true self like we are different from the creator we are 
we had a some some master they call it uh, the idea of fragmentism we we are fragmented we are tiny you know we are powerless we are um, isolated we are individual you know this type of thing that uh, this understanding that uh, our identifying with our body so this is the body we have and this is all so it has got a limited power limited capacity and all those things so this limitation and which and we are not we are whatever we in the physical world that's all of it so that is the main point of this ignorance or avidya in here they are meant that it is we are focusing only on the fragment we are not we are not aware of the how powerful we truly are who are who really we are so we are going ahead with this the smaller part of ourselves and that is the avidya so that is the ignorance so from here we need to go to the the light of awareness that you are aware who you are and that is the process of enlightenment altogether that the the self realization that is that is the path that we are talking here but most of us we identify ourselves we our ex external existence and and we are small we are limited we are helpless we are in the mercy of many things the situations we are mercy of the nature mercy of uh, outside forces and everything so that is the that sense what is within us that is coming from this avidya that is that is the ignorance they meant here so from next is um, ashmita or uh, this is uh, this is about the egotism so from that this idea that uh, mm, that this is me this is the individual self you know that way i need to do something to do you know uh, to to control everything or i i need to get something from from the external world or i need to take care of myself because nobody else is there to take care of me and all these kind of things these as lead to the um, this uh, ashmita or ahambhav like it is that that ego that ego develops here because uh, that ego ego thinks that is i am in the control and i need to take care of this otherwise there will be you know there is no help no such thing because of the ignorance there is no such thing called you know connection or inner power and nothing left there so that's when this comes so in that sense that ego is developed completely based on some false notion so and that's why it is called the illusion that uh, you are, you don't know that you are true self and you are concentrating you are developing your life based on your lower self we already other session we discussed what is lower self what is higher self so in in detail but here that the developing of that that identity yeah, which is that is a the starting point of the ego and ego start operating from there it start with a false notion that uh, you know we are separate we are helpless we are but individual so we, we need to do something to take care of this so so when it goes to a certain level <clears throat> then what happens is then it starts the ego starts putting its own version of the things like it wants something uh, it wants to um, yeah, it wants to um, have fun have some to have the pleasure and it wants to satisfy itself from there that third element called raga the craving hmm. so here it comes that it goes behind that what makes it happy it is to satisfy it itself like that ego um that it created within it it goes uh, 
with this idea of uh, to satisfy and in the name of happiness in the name of satisfy itself it puts a lot of effort a lot of things so it becomes uh, i me and that become the you know whole important thing and and because it started from the ego and from that it develops a lot of attachment like this is mine it is uh, okay so this is uh, like this is my house this is uh, you know my money this is my property and it is or it is my child it is my everything is depends on the you know about about me and it develops that uh, that kind of attachment to everything it it thinks it possesses it is it is the ownership of that hmm. this case gets into uh, it this things goes on and on it wants to have to satisfy itself so in the name of making to get look for the happiness it put lot of effort it puts the me first so that, that to in this in the search of happiness uh, to it may it do put lots of effort sometimes even at the cost of others in the cost of the uh, maybe the society or the environment or you know mother earth or whatever there is a lot of things there so it wants to make make a house in the middle of forest it will cut the trees and you know make make the house there and all this kind of things can happen you know, it because it is me is more important so that's why that craving in the name of you know more position more attachment but it wants to earn more and um, so uh, then in the search of that more and more and it, it does something which sometimes crosses uh, the limit like uh, i'm not saying earning is bad what i'm saying is there should be some kind of demarcation between the need and the greed so and when we all need uh, that these things we all need you know shelter relationship etc needed i'm not saying those are all bad what i'm saying is in the name of that then we go into further and further going to a lot of attachments and try to do hook and crook and by any cost that the developing of that attitude within us has led to this kind of the raga or craving <clears throat> craving for more you know if, if you have a you know like a, a standard apartment we in a bigger apartment and the bigger house and the this car we need a bigger car and all this there is no end to it you know all this kind of things so these things that runs you behind this all these things and be... so in this all uh, what you are doing here you are getting all the way far far away from the truth you know what is your what your true self and of course in that uh, in that when you are in that mode you know what you are having this the raga lot of things you will in the pursuit of those things you will find that there are a lot of things which are beyond your control <clears throat> you wanted something you didn't get it you know so you wanted the particular car you you have not get it or you wanted a um, particular buy a particular property maybe it is too costly you cannot afford it or maybe you wanted to marry someone it didn't happen and all those kind of things so that leads to in the process of satisfying yourself and in the process of this craving because it goes as i said it is go more and more and more in the process of there that then you come to a stage where you create some kind of you know dissatisfaction among you because you didn't get whatever you wanted <clears throat> and there come the aversion the desh you know that uh, dvesh means uh, it is here comes you in fact create a lot of enmity or a lot of things and 
um, you try to because ego doesn't allow that you lose. So by to win by hook or crook, you do a lot of effort and still you don't get it. Then you get upset. You get um, you you some. Try all you, all your means, but still you have not achieved that. There the frustration comes. <clears throat> you you create a lot of negativity, you know, within you, you know, because of that. So a lot of negativity, a lot of things, and uh, then we go go to a stage, and um, we uh, we started thinking that uh, it is not fair and it is not uh, in the world is a cruel place and we don't get whatever you want and so that phase also comes because everything what you wanted you will not get it it is naturally it is a natural law so this kind of things when you what put this is called the dvesha or aversion this this uh, part because it comes in the package of uh, you know wanting more getting more and you cannot get every wealth on this earth you cannot get every piece of land on this earth you cannot get everything you want and the things are the previous stage the cravings were you go more and more you want more <clears throat> and uh, you more and further and all those kind of things and then when it comes that uh, when uh, when you don't get whatever you are getting and this becomes quite some experiences naturally it's not possible to get all the time everything so then what happens is that uh, you are start getting to be fearful you know fearful in two ways like first of all you can understand there are a lot of uncertainties and there is nothing is certain and that uncertainty makes you fearful in both ways one is whatever you are looking for you may not get it <clears throat> you don't have you realize all the power what you have all the things even if applying that you may not get it there is a possibility of get it and another fear it comes that in your whatever your positions you know you may lose it you know you may lose wealth you may lose some relationship you may lose some property you may lose your health and because you realize that this is not the constant thing sometimes you got something what you wanted but to keep it that sometimes it is not in your hand and you tried your best, but still something is happening which you don't like, but you don't have any control over that. This part, when it comes, then life becomes full of suffering. And uh, and even if at the the height of this kind of uh, height of this kind of suffering, it uh, goes into <clears throat> a level where we ourselves like that we all cook in your, our mind that uh, this may happen this may go wrong and we go um, so even sometimes if it in the extreme cases uh, we become fearful of our, all these fears which is running in our mind all those negativity all the possibilities most of the possibilities that may not happen at all but it still runs in our if you know we worry about the future you know or losing something what you already have this something goes to a level which can create even paranoia within us you know this so much because it is you know the world is as it is so but only thing is that it is many times it didn't match our expectation we wanted something we didn't get it or we are trying hard trying different method and all but still we didn't get it or we may get it and then lose it so all these kind of things create a lot of negativity and fearfulness within us and ultimate of that is we start our uh, um, we start uh, this realization that even if there is no major thing happen 
at the time of death. You know, so death is inevitable. So then we realize that. So ultimately, we start fearing of death. You know that uh, that is ultimate losing of everything we have, so-called ours and you know, me and all those things. And this fear of death that drives, you know, losing everything, losing all these kind of things. Because death is also uncertain. It can happen anytime, any moment to anyone. So, and that kind of fear, that fear of death ultimately becomes that uh, the fifth stage, that of innovation or the clinging to life because we don't want to lose it and we have to become fearful that we lose whatever we have in our life. So that makes these five things are called the panchaklesha and which makes our life terrible suffering. <clears throat> it's uh, all these are contributed to that life that most of us we we live and our the way our mind works either we think about them all the time either we grudge something happened in the past which is unfair and all those things because if something is unfair happened to us our ego got hurt first yeah so those egos have got hurt and we start grumbling and these things said it is unfair it, it can be somebody or some system or some you know culture or whatever it is or maybe some group or uh, even maybe our own decisions were wrong and we were not been happy about it so those are the type of the grudging something happened in the past or we worry about the future <clears throat> What will happen, as I said, that uh, the aversion, that a uh, lot of fears of fear of losing, fear of something which is uncertainty and uh, that we fear feel about everything. So that runs our day to day life. And all the time, the thinking, the mind is cooking or we're cooking those all these fears in the different ways. We're expressing ourselves in the different ways sometimes in this kind of mental state harms our own body it can reflect as a different types of diseases so in the process basically we in the in that uh, we drive ourselves to some area which left with nothing but a life of suffering so this is the five steps so now let us um let us see that what are the next uh, point was what are the sufferers understanding of five obstacles as i've done uh, just now and are they interrelated oh yes the all of them if you see that way it, it develops you know the five things <clears throat> this comes as a sequence it comes as a sequence at uh, that all it started with avidya the ignorance that is the first point we slip in and then it because we are no longer we are not aware that uh, we are believing on the false identity we lost that awareness of our who we truly are and our higher self or the, our connection with the divinity in fact the, this connection never lost hmm. we just could not identify it that is that is avidya so it is not a truth at all. Uh, our inner connection always there, whether we realize or don't realize, and our inner power and all those things are already uh, always available. So, but at the time of that, we also have a free will. So because of the free will, unless until we invite it, it will not come and will interfere into our day-to-day -day business, in our thoughts, words, and actions. So. So it all started with that we are separate, we are small, we are fragment, we are we are tiny, and uh, how much we can do, etc. These kind of things started from that avidya, and that leads to you know when we are isolated, there is no one else there. It's from there, that ego has popped up. The seed of the ego is planted there from this avidya. And when that seed that grows into a tree and gives the fruit of that, and those are the fruits which 
brings into that state of uh, the craving for more because the inherent uh, to satisfy ourselves we need to get more and more into more and all these things are typical you know syndrome of our ego is taking you know take playing havoc on us so avidya then asmita egotism then the craving here that we can crave everything in the world but definitely at certain stage we may not get it or we may get tiny percentage of it not what we really wanted and from there the dvesha that uh, aversion starts and there are slowly slowly we get a lot of things which will not follow as per that uh, as per our wish <clears throat> our wish is too big you know so and uh, and definitely at certain point um, we will see that not not everything will follow whatever our whims of him and fancy um, the world will not well follow its own rule it doesn't go with as per my wish or whatever i want and what makes me satisfied makes me happy and from that uh, so in that order then comes the fear and that fear develops and all those fear they go hand in hand with uh, something which is actually we have not get it something just we have it but as I, as i mentioned it is a fear of losing so that takes us further and further deep into the that uh, the blind hole or you know deep into the ditch product of that is a fear of death and so we fear so much so we too many the the accumulation and the clinging to whatever we have in the life but too much into that and because all that generated from the insecurity or at the fear at the high, higher level in the fear of at the worst level fear of death it makes us to do all those things so this as uh, so this has a sequence as the five uh, panchaklesha has been mentioned and that is exactly the sequence how it plays and it all starts with just a ignorance that misconception the non awareness of who we truly are it all starts from there so this is the sequence is yes uh, they are interlinked and it goes into the next step into next step into all so when we reach to that final stage and all of them they contribute to our the dissatisfaction about the life and uh, the suffering of life <clears throat> so the next part is that our path how to get liberated from it that to get that uh, the simple answer is when you drop the false notion in all your mind created things when you drop the uh, five thing and you unify with yourself with the creator that is called yoga you know there are different types of yoga so when you drop that illusion and go and work towards the unification and to work towards you towards how to be aware of the truth and that liberates you from all these things in patanjali yoga sutra there is ashtanga yoga they mentioned that including meditation and <clears throat> asana and you know there are there are many i'm not going into that detail but basically these are the spiritual practices that takes you your um, from attention from the external world to inner world and then you go into that higher level of awareness through that you raise your vibration and those practices make you first thing that uh, you to you need to do is make your mind come all these things coming because of the chattering mind your ego mind which is ultimately ruining the show it it starts with a big thing big promises and you know self but it uh, it is but it ended uh, with the dissatisfaction and basically complaining about all uh, 
um, all these uh, all those things and so that is the way that we need to find out that what is the way path of liberation is only to realize the truth that we are not this lower version it is just a one reflection of us one it is in one sense it is correct to understand it is a tiny bit of us but we are not that we are full our the higher self or the soul consciousness that that is that has got it, it is well connected with this the, the source and it has got a lot of powers that inner powers but in absence of those we get fearful we get we feel that we are not taken care of and everything when we find the way to get back into that that level and then get in touch with our own inner power through spiritual practices that all of us we we just know how to meditate we practice and when we search for it then uh, some guide or some master appears in our life and then show us the technique and there so when we follow that which techniques which is best suited for us like uh, not every technique uh, everybody can follow like not all the type of food we can eat we have some some kind of food we can we can like we can digest and all those things same here with this uh, that spiritual techniques so whatever we it suits us it, it resonate with us then we have to take that we have to follow that and that level when we go into that uh, further into that journey of that then we uh, our eyes the inner eyes you can say third eye also it opens up that is the wisdom that opens up this wisdom is is the pragya that the the truth the the experiential understanding of the first hand experiential understanding of the truth that is your true knowledge not accumulated from the external world that is not that is we call it knowledge but that is that can only information that's not knowledge okay from outside world whatever we gather it is information and now it is available for free you know you just do google search you will get all the information you need yeah but the pragya that wisdom that cannot be borrowed you know it has to be it has to develop within him yourself through awareness and that awareness will only come through the direct first and experiential understanding of the truth it cannot be borrowed from anyone or anything else that when you grow into that awareness you come to the level of the wisdom that you realize your true self that is you know um that is called this this the whole issue of self realization is that you understand who you are understand means not information not nobody else will tell you who you are you need to know who you are from your own experiences from your own awareness and that gives you the the power which you truly have your inner power and that the in the light of that of power and the awareness understanding has been already downloaded then all these areas whatever in all these areas whatever see in in a focus light there whatever is not true that will disappear when we bring into all this thing our consciousness attend we focus on something we get connected with our consciousness or the the soul consciousness and the power of that comes through our attention so we when we focus on something as for example something is running in our mind say thoughts <clears throat> if we focus witness those thoughts with connection with our awareness in the power of that awareness those get dissolved so they don't have any power to lead us to fear lead us to you know desires lead us to you know attachment and many things what is the, the, that was the earlier part i explained they become powerless because it is coming under the light of that superpower that we are all connected to and 
when we all that this these things get dissolved then we get detached from it we don't run away from the practical reality but we still live a life in this practical world but our governing factor is not them not become fear we we get rid of this fear based things which is originally came from avidya and run by ego and so and so forth what was earlier part of it so then one what runs it it runs by your awareness and then your in your pure love and compassion because you realize that there is no other we are all we are one the sense of oneness brings that everything is a part of me the expression of me and there is no conflict and contradiction or competition we are all the unique expression of the divinity so that sense we get into the truth so we are we are not separate we are one but at the same time we are not same we are unique like five fingers is a part of one hand but they are not same and neither they fight with each other you will never see that two hands are fighting with between each other but we fight to other somebody else because we think they are other if we if we know the truth that we are we are part of the same body same me then the fighting ends that's why our two hands don't fight with each other <clears throat> so this is the reason that ultimately when it opens up our the the the, the consciousness that opens up our true self our we are made of pure love when we operate from that then all these illusions they go away we see the truth as it is we accept the truth and operate from that pure love so we don't see that anything other we need not to compete to anything we come here with a certain experience certain things we'll experience and we go from here we have some other experience in another dimension or something else so this is a part of the experience like in the whole life we don't stay and stick to one place right we go and move around and go and we uh, try some some day to some um, what is called uh, chinese restaurant another day, day to another you know south indian restaurant or whatever it is you know what we visit different places sometimes we visit a park and it is visit a mountain we visit a seaside so we don't stick to one place same here we, so Uh, it is not about good and bad we just experience and move on mm. no need to get attached to it and get into the mode of possessing possessing it and get into the control and all this drive because in the control mode most likely you will come to the level where the more suffering you are inviting because the aversion will take place and definitely it will take place at certain level mm. so and then uh, you will not get that kind of satisfaction anymore so they, that is the way to walk the path ultimately when we get completely we live a life with full understanding full awareness and complete detachment of whatever happening externally around us we have full awareness then we get liberated that is a liberated life we are not getting carried away with all those things what is happening they cannot control us anymore so we know our true self we get guided by our higher self our soul consciousness and we lead our life as a liberated life you know we are no longer bound by all those things and we operate with a pure heart and compassion with our fellow human beings so and of course we need to protect ourselves physically but we we can operate our inner uh, the power will be power coming from that uh, pure loving loving attention the loving power and then all our whatever we like to explore and that we explore spiritually you know we are one we have given the four things operating principles uh, so you can read that again so and uh, so it it says uh, protect uh, protect physically and then uh, live lovingly earn and jointly whatever you like that money will come and you can 
we can do that uh, for your living and uh, and spread spiritually so whatever you wanted to explore and all those kind of things and you have to expand in you know infinitely the, all all this you do in the spiritual domain all of us has a capacity to create an universe our own universe exactly the way we want but not in the physical world that we get completely misguided and misunderstood to do that here it is not that it is it is that uh, the inner world that you can create anything you can create any type of happy place you know you can say that uh, say uh, you can create something like a wonderful crystal garden hmm, with extreme peace and tranquility and you visit those garden time to time it's your own <laughs> you visit all are possible you know you can feel extreme joy and extreme this and uh, so you can operate from there and there is no limit there is no tax <laughs> there is nothing there it's all yours so so we in, in that sense that uh, we are the creator or our 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 own our life our own reality and um, so rather than busting our brain and effort into something somewhere it is not designed for you to give you that so you better we we learn we understand and then we grow in awareness to go to the level where we get completely liberated and get any type of life we want our life is the experience we have during during this period of time we are on the planet earth the ex- only thing is the experience experiences need not to be external all the time so we are just missing the point because we are focusing on the our satisfaction is an internal matter our happiness is within us so we are the external thing we are doing try to get this inner satisfaction from the external world it cannot happen by design so it is a wrong place to find uh, happiness there happiness is the inner thing so to inner world you have to get it and download it and you are, all the time you can be there no matter what is happening in the external world that is a liberated life that is a life of your own choice you can you can lead that at your it will be all in your command so that is a liberated life so, so all we need to do that follow that path the mind driven life to our soul driven the consciousness driven driven life and then you operate our life moment by moment uh, from there so in the in the our demon inner world there is no time so we can operate every moment and every moment can be a joyful experience of existence so and whatever the external world as i said last one anyway you have to leave that you know you leave the body leave that property leave the relationship leave your name leave your designation leave your whatever you accumulated all those thing even your body everything you have to leave so when we voluntarily surrender all those things by in the living body then we get enlightened that is the realization that that you were liberated from all none of that can control us anymore and that is a liberated life that is an enlightened life that is a life of bliss so with that i'll conclude this uh, the learning session so if you have any question you can you can ask now uh, shraddhanjali you raised your hand i can see is it you wanted to ask something or it is by mistake uh, sorry it was by mistake <laughs> all right okay no problem yeah if you have any question you can ask now Guruji, I want to ask one question. Uh, you say that we have this attachment of material thing, even in relations also we have got attachment. 
so we should not keep attachment in relationship also um no relationship i'm saying that your expectation uh, uh, one one of the one of the you need to mute yeah? there are two devices uh, you meet a new yeah um see what what i am saying is that uh, of course you will not cut relationship uh, all the relationship the expectation from the relationship to satisfy you that expectation should go because those are the reason for your uh, what is called desha to develop that i am not getting whatever i wanted so and in the all the relationships lessons are very um, what i should say very illogical in that sense you know illogical means ultimate lesson when we uh, come here to learn the relationship lesson relationship lesson ultimately and i'm talking the now spiritually is all about about giving not taking but we think relationship and give and take yeah but our test it is our own thing is how we finally realize it is all about how much we can give that makes us uh, that's the relation one once we go to that level that how much we give and we leave it there then our relationship lessons are learned on the planet earth more we going to give and take and people explain maybe rightly so people explain they, if there is no give and take what is the point of relationship okay it's is fine but that is not the lesson we come here to learn okay any relationship we come here to learn only to give you know when we learn that when other expectation get dropped we learned our lesson why because then nobody else can control us because we have no expectation if something you receive welcome i am not saying you I'm not saying that only i am saying you have to get rid of the expectation of getting something back or getting something due or it is my right and it should be like that and all these things so if you can overcome that then you got liberated from that as well you maintain a you know wonderful relationship there is no expectation you know if something somebody responds is fine if not respond that is also fine you know that that is that is a level that we reach at the, as a relationship person. okay all right uh, guru ji i just want to ask you another question regarding this we are not supposed to expect anything but love that Feeling that has to be reciprocated, na. If I am loving, if I I am in love with someone, uh, I should. I generally in our case, what we expect that that love has to be reciprocated, isn't it? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. You are right, but again, uh, if it is not reciprocated, then you got frustrated, right? So that is exactly one of the clasher. <laughs> so. that is only the another obstacle see means only one um, love the true love the pure love which is a love of the divine yeah that is the only thing which it will definitely come other things on on earthly thing no guarantee okay there is no guarantee and so that that's that's another thing we got the emotional trap into all those things so just to avoid us to get into that so we can just we can express ourselves like you know like we are we are delivering pure love because we just because it is our nature i give an example of a flower if flower does not you know discriminate giving fragrance because who is coming nearby and whether the person will appreciate the fragrance or not it gives very non expression and that is exactly what we need to learn you know it is not uh, about give and take love because when the 
taking part come it is not in your under your control okay if something is not your control either you realize there is nothing coming at all or whatever is coming that is not enough and in either way you will get frustrated okay so on the in the search of love you basically become frustrated and you are suffering okay so that's why it is one of the panchaklesha that we need to avoid but if you get it you appreciate it of course but no such thing how much i will get how other person will you know uh, act or it is the duty or i deserve it and all those kind of things it is just only you are making to satisfy yourself that is where the ego comes into play i am doing my duty i am i am loving and uh, it's because of loving nature and rest you know if it is if i have to get something i connect with my own inner self get we feel with the, this divine love from the all higher dimensions you know from all these masters all this you know uh, higher dimensional uh, that ascended masters and everybody so we got lot of love and those are unconditional yeah. they don't expect anything from you neither we have to you know charge you for that or something like that okay but my what basically it is saying that if you look for it nothing wrong in looking for it but be prepared if you don't get it you should not lose your peace of mind that's all okay thank you thank you pranam bless you na pranam bless you anyone else having any question yes she Sashi, yeah, unmute, unmute. <laughs> Sorry. Um. So this thing that you have told about this expectations and so what happens with me is that like some uh like in sometimes I'm I have that sense of awareness or whatever that you know okay I have done my bit I should not expect and then sometimes I'm not like. it's a graph so why um can i not able to hold into that like why no the simple answer is that uh, when we our vibration is lower we get into these things if you you feel that you are frustrated or going low because of any reason understand that the vibration has gone down only thing is to raise the vibration that's all it is okay. it doesn't matter what caused it you know externally okay when your vibration is higher then we can accept anything you know we come to a state that it doesn't matter you know end of the day i am connected i am just uh, with that uh, connected with a you know infinite source so we don't need anything for or anyone there will be no you know anything we are receiving welcome but that that is not necessary for my own you know living and survival hmm. okay and it happens on the same day sometimes like yeah. what in, okay yeah yeah it can it can happen uh, same day because um again we need to drop this kind of uh, judgment as well like at one point of time you need to forgive yourself as well okay self love has to come hmm. so even at the some stage we need to drop the judgment about our own self just main key is acceptance accept who you are you know you can be up sometime down sometime that is normal so if you if you go into that acceptance when rooted into the self love then you can cross anything yeah, so this is fine you know that is it is not happening because of something i did wrong or something of that nature is not that my advice is only you have to see that your directions are correct like how much fast you are going and how up or down you are going it doesn't matter if the direction get reversed then it is a matter of concern <clears throat> but if it is in the direction but it is only ups and downs and it is stopping some place for some time and then again starting etc doesn't matter 
as long as you are moving forward hmm. and what is this um going like how do we realize when we are going uh, in the complete opposite direction i, I think okay. i okay. Like, so fear in this area i, uh, I heard no. that i should not go in that direction okay no let me give you a little bit of easier way when you think that all spiritual practices are useless waste wasting of time yeah, you better things to do in your life you understand that you have reversed <laughs> okay anything if you say that this is we don't have time it is useless uh, no point then that point you make sure your ego has completely taken over you know there is because ego controls us like three things i told that it creates doubt or logically prove that it is not worth it or inject some fear <clears throat> if you one of these things happens then you understand that you reversed it but temporarily it's okay and it's temporarily you thinking uh, no no it's not uh, you know today i'm not feeling like meditating i'm not judging about one day or something like that i'm saying in general if you if you feel that it is useless or you know whatever it can give many things you know? so many ways or give example uh, uh, so and so is doing practice for so many years what happened to him or her uh, so all the, these are your ego is telling you know? mm. because externally you may not know internally how how people have reached where mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. okay what level they have reached you you never know so so the better not to judge about somebody else or things like that uh, or uh, or even the you know level of knowledge and all those kind of things those are your mind is cooking mm -hmm. because just to, as a corollary corollary i'm saying that uh, every master uh, suppose you are comparing masters or something like that uh, every master has given a task huh? they are following the task suppose if somebody has appointed for a class 5 teacher and then class 5 teacher will not discuss about phd thesis mm. okay maybe the teacher is aware of that you know maybe the teacher can actually talk about that but the task is not that task is to give a class 5 and teach class 5 students so whatever the the person teaches or whatever this thing it does not reflect the actual the knowledge and wisdom or the connection that person may be having hmm? okay i'm just giving a just side track so but but if your mind comes into the logical thing you you compare and you see that you know maybe you know looking for a three different coat and go, go to the best coat and things like that those are our our conditioned mind that will go into that level so if you are too much into that analytical mode or too much into that then your reversal has started more you go into the surrender more you go into that uh, acceptance of what it is you know what you are getting hmm. then it takes you further hmm. no analysis no complain only acceptance hmm. okay yes thank you guru okay god bless you Anybody else having any any further question? Guruji, just one thing. Like you are saying, in relationships, mm -hmm. uh, in relationships, uh, we have to be all acceptance. what i understand is that we are into a relationship especially the close ones that is because of our karmic bondage in the previous lives probably yes so how that mm -hmm. how that karmic bondage will be solved just by accepting one person is accepting the other person need not accept or both have to be aligned um, see it uh, um, means in this case you concentrated about your own own karma okay okay so what we do is that we we do whatever best possible 
based on our idea and all those things and you leave it there okay that's why the giving part comes okay, okay. without taking in account that how much return i'm getting or whether the person my to whom i am related to is deserving it or not uh, all those things are will delay to settle the karma okay once you give your part and finish it doesn't matter it work doesn't work ma phale shu kadachana the x the result doesn't matter but you give whatever possible yeah, and that is you are truthful that will elevate you from your karma okay right. that way you settle it but more you expect more you expect the return you go to deserving thing and further higher level of if somebody is uh, you know punishing like you you take not only that you retaliatory that you need to punish someone you are no one we are no one to punish anyone here correct even though that that person deserve punishment but we should not we are not punisher nobody has give us authority to punish any other human being so when we understand that realize that and then we go into the the territory when we have done our pit matter ends there okay right so if not then it comes back it drag on like in another lifetime and things like that so which was not really necessary so basically it is from our side we clean our slate let the other yeah. side with the way they want yeah yeah that's basically is none of our business but other party whether unka kya ho raha hai and all those kind of things none of our business it is between uh, you know their own soul path and their own karma you know that's nothing to do with us Hmm. but we said this is what i'm saying is this is a way to settle it because not allowing our ego to come into play into all those things but put it into panchaklesha we we have to just maintain that and with that purity we'll do our best and rest we we'll leave it there so just going on the previous question which uh, shyasi was asking as to how we hmm. are feeling suppose we have a toxic relationship with somebody that person hmm. comes in front of us if we hmm. have some retaliatory uh, thoughts in the mind then we can say we are going down and yeah. if we are having neutral uh, towards uh, his appearance or her appearance then we can say that we have accepted him or her as it is so that is a way See, of going up yeah means thing is you cannot control the other party correct or you cannot control that what you can control your own state of mind right right only thing no matter how toxic the person is you don't allow you to get affected by it you should be detached from it okay so and that is the way you develop that whatever person says does and all those thing you should don't allow yourself to get affected that's all you, you can do and that is the way forward no need to take any retaliatory thing hmm. if possible you avoid do that situation you know so that the actual no chance of getting any kind of confrontation happens yeah, that is that is also fine you know you can just avoid simply but if if you cannot then accept accept the things we cannot change so we just accept as it is uh, and the judgment and etc we need not to take any action on that one let the divine takes care of it okay Thank you, Guru. Thank you. So All right. Much. Okay. God bless you. Yes, Vani, you raised your hand. Guruji, I have a question. Like, I mean, it is for me my experience. It sometimes um, I try to be normal when somebody uh, tries to put me down or something that that I have been able to achieve, but I'm not able to achieve when somebody compliments me. I feel happy. So that also is not a good thing, right? No, 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 no. I am not saying you should not feel happy. You know. I mean, we no, have to I'm be not... normal for like whether it is sad or. I mean, is that? See, yeah, yeah. no, no. I am not saying that you should not. You should be. You shouldn't be expressionless. <laughs> I am not <laughs> saying that. <laughs> See, what I am saying is that you, if you somebody appreciates you, you reciprocate that appreciation. Okay. So thank you very much. Uh, you know it is so kind of you. You know that's fine. Okay. 
but if somebody criticizes you, you say, okay, fine. Uh, you know, you said it is your view, and thank you very much. That, that's also fine with me. You know, I may not agree, but it's fine with me. Hmm. That's your view, but make sure you don't get affected by that. Hmm. You know, by both ways, you should not get manipulated. That is what that is your own power. Hmm. Okay, so that is what you need to make sure that you either way. Of course, you, if somebody is appreciating you, reciprocate and say thank you and accept that. Somebody is not giving something. Is it? It is your view. I, I'm okay. Fine. It is. I don't agree, but it is okay with me. Hmm. So that you don't react, you don't escalate that, and you leave it there. Okay. I mean, thanks to you, I'm able to actually like take any negative things without getting affected. Mm -hmm. So just like it, it is a huge achievement for me from a past few years. So that is mm -hmm. a good thing about this mm -hmm. sessions, you know. No, because see what you can control is your, your reaction. Hmm. People take advantage if that your reaction uh, is you, you feel that you are troubled and people get more into that, you know. People that is some sadly it is a human psychology. If somebody is in trouble and all they, you know, get uh, some fun out of it, like they get into more trouble and see you out. And if you if you say it doesn't matter, okay, few times maybe then after that people will lose interest because they are not getting that fun of making you down. Okay, so and that's fine. It's your view, and not necessarily it has to be true, but doesn't matter who is right, who is wrong. It doesn't matter. Fine, it's your view. You have a right for any view. You know, so many people uh, also, uh, you know, they try to, um, you know, argue with. Suppose I said something and try to argue with me. I said, no, no, I have no argument. I don't want to argue. You don't accept it. You have a right to not to accept it. That's fine. And if you don't agree, that is fine. I, I have no issues with that. You know, I just I just said what you came to me. You know that. Okay, I am not taking things back, but at the same time, I don't need you know either approval or rejection from anyone. <laughs> I don't need it. You may say it. It's up to you. Your view. So when you come to that mode that you are not expecting uh, any kind of appreciation or rejection, that is the state to be. Because you don't get deterred from your own uh, place. You don't get carried away with either of this, emotionally carried away. Hmm. So that's fine. It's your, your view. You don't, you, you don't like, it's fine. You know, you need to like everything. And neither somebody has to like me, you know, everybody has to like me. Have, why? There is no need. It's okay not to like and not to this thing. So you come to a state called equanimity. Equanimity means nothing is actually affecting you. It's not about the other person. It is about you, you know. So, and that, when you come to that stage, that that is the sign that you are connected with your inner power power and and that time that will be more and more you practice more and more that power will will come to you all right okay god bless you all right any other question yes vikas uh in fact you replied that what came to my mind but anyway i will mm. just say again mm. uh Haryom talked about uh, toxic relationship mm. but when it is other way when the relations are very good mm. in that case uh people go i mean most of us we go with the flow and we respond like that for where to mm. there also we need to keep a, uh, some stop somewhere and that is mm. always missed mm -hmm. it goes and after some time uh, it becomes a burden on other, either side 
So, yeah. See, um, there are there is no such fixed answer to this. Okay, it is you have to take some inner call into that. You know, means we should not do overdoing something. You know, there is a comes that uh, things we can regret later. Hmm. But what I am saying is, this there is nothing wrong in enjoying a relationship. Absolutely nothing wrong. Okay, but where to? Where I should? How much I should go? That comes from your inner call, and it's also case to case basis. There is no such fixed rule on that. Only what I am saying is nothing wrong in enjoying relationship. Of course, there you should enjoy. You know. but you should not go into over promising over you know doing something which cannot be sustainable you know that is the only thing we have to be just self you know from your side you have to be just be more into at the realistic level rather than going too much further into that that's all but there is no rule you know if it is uh, no such rule even how much there is also no rule you know some some places you can go much much you know extend if you can hold that it is done there is no issues there yeah so there is no such thing but just from the experiences of uh, the many those kind of beyond limitation uh, this relationship only found into the in the spirituality in the divinity in the surrendering okay is difficult to get that kind of thing in a, in a another human being no matter who he or she is so that level of surrender and this uh, happens then becomes two becomes one okay 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 and that is the adrenarishwar uh, concept altogether the highest level of spiritual union is is the union between two lovers hmm. that the oneness na no? sense of oneness i was talking that the highest level of union below that is just friend you know below that it is just like maybe uh, some relationship like a father son you, know, you ask god is my father and thing like that yeah and one below that is maybe the boss you are the boss i am the servant you know, so it develops the oneness you know with the creator it develops but highest level of that union is it is just like relationship between lovers this is nothing nothing left between two and that actually replicated that form of the thing replicated by radha krishna hmm. or uh, har parvati that uh, the symbolism is that yeah. you know people misunderstood for all these things because they already come to the physical but those are not physical thing this is the highest level of reunion at the spiritual level <clears throat> so and that is the maximum level possible so means one can feel something other can feel the same thing yeah? okay this kind of thing anyway so i'm just mentioning it here but in the so highest level of that kind of union possible in that uh, in the spiritual domain spiritual. absolutely pure loving pure heart and pure and that is uh, in but practical practically it is difficult to to achieve to go into that level you know because a human being as a uh, we are i call it private limited you know we have not given the total thing hmm. so even in the the physical dimension to love also we have a limitation you know we cannot go to the extreme you know infinite love is not possible here because of the nature that our mind body and intellect are limited but in that dimension it's possible so and there is no such thing called any concern or you know retaliation or this kind of things are not there so it's all pure anyway so that is uh, that but in general to answer your original question you can just go ahead and do something which is appropriate it is the right word you know you will know it that this is it's now going 
beyond appropriate and that is a beyond appropriate part you may like to you may have to regret later on so don't go into that territory leave it there as a pleasant form hmm. so and enjoy the relationship absolutely all right thank you okay god bless you